I know who owns this boat. I just can't place the name. No, no, it's not. In the spirit of spooky season, I wanted to share with you my favorite Halloween episodes of SpongeBob SquarePants, which includes SpongeBob's scariest episode ever and its darkest episode. Let's start with the first ever Halloween special, Scaredy Pants. SpongeBob, who is finishing a day at the Krusty Krab, gets a ghostly boo that rattles his underwater bones. Mr. Krabs, ever the opportunist, spins a spooky tale about the Flying Dutchman, a ghost haunting the seas, especially on Halloween. And wouldn't you know it, Squidward swoops in, draped in a makeshift Dutchman costume, sending our pal sprinting home, spooked by every seaweed's shadow. Now SpongeBob, desperate to shake off his scaredy pants label, recruits Patrick, his ever loyal but not so bright best friend, for a mission to become the scariest creatures under the sea. Their plan? A hilariously unscary attempt to mimic the flying Dutchman, a bit of shaving here, a makeshift costume there, and voila! SpongeBob, with his now round head, and Patrick bumble through Bikini Bottom, mistaking confused glances for terrified stares, crashing the Krusty Krab's Halloween party, they attempt a grand scare, with SpongeBob dangling ghost-like from a rope. Boo! I'm the Flying Dutchman! Patrick tries to sound menacing, but alas, a jellyfish sting sends their plan spiraling into comedic chaos, revealing SpongeBob's identity and his now visible brain, thanks to Patrick's over-enthusiastic shaving. But hold your seahorses, the real fright is yet to come. The actual Flying Dutchman appears, furious at their mockery, only to flee in terror at the sight of SpongeBob's exposed brain. The crowd, once amused, now screams in genuine horror, while SpongeBob, finally achieving his scary status, nonchalantly chats with Patrick about his brain, now mistaken for a pink hat. This next episode is known to be by most fans as the scariest episode called Graveyard Shift. It starts with Squidward, ever the grumpy employee, ready to clock out and dive into his cozy bed. But wait! Tom saunters in, craving a late night Krabby Patty and fries. Mr. Krabs, smelling more money than Ocean Breeze, gleefully rips the closed sign and declares a new 24-7s policy. The crowd goes wild, and in comes our ever-optimistic SpongeBob, belting out a tune about the joys of non-stop work, dancing through his chores with that infectious SpongeBob energy. Squidward, seizing an opportunity, sends SpongeBob to take out the trash, only to spook him with a tale of the hash-slinging slasher, a ghostly former fry cook haunting the place. SpongeBob, though trying to play it cool, is visibly shaken, screaming at intervals much to Squidward's amusement and eventual annoyance. Stop your screaming, SpongeBob, I made it all up, Squidward exclaims, only to be met with SpongeBob's hysterical laughter. But the night quickly transforms, flickering lights, a mysterious phone call, and an unexpected bus arrival, all straight from Squidward's tail, unfold in real time. A shadowy figure approaches, and our duo clings together, trembling and anticipating the worst. But plot twist? It's just a nervous teenager wanting to apply for a fry cook position, explaining the hang-up call with a shy stutter. And just when you think the night can't get any weirder, Nosferatu pops in, flickering the lights with a cheeky grin. Moving on to the next episode, Ghost Host, the Flying Dutchman, crashes his ship and shacks up with SpongeBob. But instead of a chill roommate situation, the Dutchman turns SpongeBob's pineapple into a 24-7's haunted house, scaring the square pants off him. SpongeBob, desperate and scared, knocks on Squidward's door, pleading, Squidward, there's a ghost in my house. Squidward, ever the skeptic, retorts, SpongeBob, ghosts are just something adults made up to scare children like taxes, and slams the door. SpongeBob, not one to be easily defeated, seeks Patrick's help, but alas, Patrick, being Patrick, just shuts his door, probably thinking it's a new game they're playing. Then a twist, Gary's in peril, or so it seems. The Dutchman, with a devilish grin, pretends to devour Gary, only for our favorite snail to appear unscathed, leaving SpongeBob baffled but relieved. The townsfolk, initially scared, soon grow tired of the Dutchman's antics. His scares become mere inconveniences, and his ghostly groans barely earn a blink. SpongeBob, ever the optimist, decides to help the now despondent Dutchman regain his frightful flair. SpongeBob cheers, but alas, their attempts to spook the town fall flat, one after another. But, lo and behold, Squidward, the staunch non-believer, becomes the Dutchman's redemption when he shrieks in terror at his apparition. The Dutchman, revitalized, confesses his scare was lost with his broken ship, but now, with his mojo back, he's ready to haunt the high seas once more. He leaves, but not without gifting SpongeBob a scary surprise. Next, we have The Curse of Bikini Bottom, 
SpongeBob and Patrick, out of sheer boredom and a mischievous visit to Squidward's shed, dive into a wild adventure. So they borrow Squidward's lawnmower with his morbid blessings, hoping they'd somehow manage to harm themselves. But oh, the duo takes it to a whole new level, zooming uncontrollably into a cemetery, disturbing the peace of the grumpy, fashion-conscious Flying Dutchman underground. Dirt splatters all over his freshly picked shirt for a date, and yep, his beard gets an unplanned trim by the lawnmower, sparking a ghostly rage. In a twist of karma, the Dutchman turns SpongeBob and Patrick into ghosts until his beard regrows, plunging them into a transparently chaotic life. Their ghostly woes don't stop there. Attempts to scare Squidward and work at the Krusty Krab turn into a plethora of errors with customers mistaking them for mermaids and fleeing in terror. Desperate, they beg the Dutchman to revert them back to their spongy and starry selves, leading to a hysterical makeover session where SpongeBob becomes a makeshift beard. Fast forward a few months, our duo is back to normal, pondering the Dutchman's love life. And just when you think things can't get funnier, the Dutchman's monstrous date pops up, sending him screaming into the abyss. Next up we have Ghoul Fools. SpongeBob and Patrick stumble upon a haunted houseboat, crashing conveniently nearby. Despite SpongeBob's initial hesitations, Patrick, ever the brave or clueless soul, convinces him to explore the spooky vessel. Inside, they meet Lord Poltergeist, a ghost who, despite his best efforts and a sea shanty, struggles to convince Patrick of his spectral status. The plot thickens as their souls are seemingly snatched, and a doubloon is thrust into their hands with a task. Retrieve a head gasket within 24 hours, or say adios to their souls forever. A frantic visit to the Krusty Krab ensues, where Mr. Krabs, Squidward, and Sandy get roped into the shenanigans, each with their own amusingly selfish or absurd motivations. The return to the ghostly boat is nothing short of a chaotic treasure hunt, with Mr. Krabs' greed, Patrick's indecisiveness with donuts, and Squidward's SpongeBob-sized nightmare providing a hearty chuckle. The twist? Lord Poltergeist never took their souls and the treasure. Well, that belongs to the Flying Dutchman, who isn't too pleased about it being stolen. The episode ends in a bizarre void, with the crusty crab operating amidst the chaos and a giant demonic SpongeBob flipping the restaurant, morphing into the cackling Flying Dutchman. Don't Look Now is another personal favorite. The episode starts with SpongeBob and Patrick, who decide to prove their bravery by watching the terrifying movie Fisherman 4, Attack of the Hook, despite Squidward's warning. The duo, attempting to showcase their grown-up status, end up being terrified, mistaking shadows for the menacing fishermen, and even getting spooked by the most mundane things. Their fear escalates to such a degree that they can't even muster the courage to walk home alone, leading to a comical back and forth of trying to escort each other, all while being petrified by every little noise in the dark. Squidward seizes the opportunity to have a little fun at their expense, dressing up as the fishermen and scaring the living hell out of them. Then Patrick, with his face seemingly ripped off by Squidward's hook, runs into SpongeBob's room, causing utter chaos and panic. Their attempt to save Squidward from his own disguise turns into a complete mess, inadvertently causing him real harm and landing him in an ambulance. Things really take a turn when the fisherman costume, now seemingly operating ghostly on its own, terrifies the trio, only to reveal the true culprit behind the second scare, Gary, SpongeBob's pet snail, meowing innocently. The Legend of Bukini Bottom is another classic. SpongeBob decks his house with adorable, sparkly decorations, only to be dubbed Too Cute by Patrick, the Knight of the Sea. Well, in costume at least. Patrick, aiming for a spookier vibe, introduces SpongeBob to the concept that scary equals funny. Intrigued, SpongeBob hops on board, turning their Halloween journey into an escapade, much to the bewilderment of their friends and neighbors. Their journey takes a turn when they encounter the Flying Dutchman, who's initially baffled by SpongeBob's chuckles amidst his shenanigans. SpongeBob and Patrick, undeterred by the sight, find hilarity where others see horror, until the Dutchman separates their friends' souls from their bodies. A spectral mist, ghostly cages, and a soulless Patrick later, SpongeBob realizes, maybe, just maybe, some scary things are genuinely scary. In a daring rescue mission, SpongeBob, armed with Sandy's acorn monster puppet and a newfound respect for fear, confronts the Dutchman. A peek into SpongeBob's brain reveals his deepest fear, his naked baby photos. A giant, diaper-clad SpongeBob apparition sends the Dutchman fleeing. Souls are restored, and our Bikini Bottom friends learn a valuable lesson about facing fears head-on. And Plankton? Well, he becomes an accidental Halloween treat. Next we have the Ghost of Plankton. 
In this episode, our tiny antagonist Plankton turns into a ghost, all in the name of the ever-elusive secret formula. Plankton starts floating through walls at the Krusty Krab, but oh wait, he can't grab anything. It's like being at an all-you-can-eat buffet with no hands. Enter the Flying Dutchman, who decides to teach our transparent friend the ropes of being a proper ghost. The lessons are a riot. From shape-shifting, where Plankton transforms into a not-so-scary version of the Dutchman, to scaring, where he ends up frightening himself more than anyone else. And let's not forget the house haunting, where Squidward's clarinet playing turns out to be the real horror. Plankton even manages to master the art of picking things up. But alas, the secret formula bottle isn't into the whole ghostly phase and refuses to phase through walls. So Plankton returns to the chum bucket only to find his own funeral in progress. The mourners are not exactly mourning, and when Plankton's body gets hijacked by the Flying Dutchman, things go south real quick. The episode wraps up with a lively Plankton, happy to be back in his squishable form, even if it means getting stomped on by the once mourners. In a cabin in the kelp, we now see the gal pals, consisting of Karen, Sandy, Mrs. Puff, and the new recruit, Pearl, embark on a camping adventure that takes a wild turn. Well, they're all set, their trailer is packed, and they're cruising along, blissfully unaware that Pearl has plotted a cheeky prank involving SpongeBob. But oh, the tables turn when their trailer, with SpongeBob sneakily stowed away, detaches and crashes into a mud pit. Fast forward to the cabin, the gal pals, ignoring the loss of the trailer and Pearl's backpack, spruce up an abandoned cabin and settle in for some spooky tales around the campfire. They weave a hair-raising story of Fliberty Gibbet, a former gal pal, now a vengeful spirit, to scare Pearl. But wait, the frights become a bit too real when noises rustle in the dark and an actual monster appears. In a series of events, SpongeBob, lost but undeterred, arrives, and the monster? Well, she just wants to sell them pinecone sticks. But Fliberty Gibbet's unexpected appearance sends them all into a panicked frenzy, ending with a literal crash into our screens. And there we have it, my friends. SpongeBob is usually a happy-go-lucky show, but it was refreshing to see a more scarier version of it that still brought the laughter. If you're hungry for more amazing content, just click on the video popping up on your screen right now. And hey, if you had a good time, give that like button a little love tap, will ya? Subscribe to the channel for more amazing content at your fingertip, and thanks for watching, peace.